One day, a caterpillar came out of a cocoon as a sparrow. And some butterfly said, what are you doing? You were supposed to be me. And the caterpillar, who was now a sparrow, said, I didn't know. I mean, no one told me what I couldn't be, so I thought about what I wanted to be and devoted myself to that. Just then, all the other butterflies who had been friends with the sparrow when he had been a caterpillar Hearing about what happened, gathered around. They were small with big wings and big with small wings and so many different shapes and sizes and colors and all of them and all their newfound glory talked about him. And some of them who had never thought about what they might want to be, had never thought it possible to be a sparrow, thought it was amazing. Others, angry that they had never thought about what they might want to be and certainly never considered sparrow as an option, thought it was horrible. And some believing it too late for them to change now, said in their sadness, why a sparrow? Stupid. Why not a, a eagle if you're going to be a bird, right? right? Or a peacock, not a dumb sparrow. When I was a little boy, I didn't want to be me. I wanted to be a dinosaur or a robot. I wanted to be fire. I wanted to live on a chocolate island and be a cartoon. I was going to be a sparrow because we all have to be something, and I didn't know the rules. I didn't know that caterpillars could only be butterflies, or not everybody was meant to be great. See, that's something we grow into, right? It takes years for us to learn that Kobe Bryant is no Michael Jordan, who is not Obama, will never be. Lincoln is no Jennifer Aniston, who is hotter than your girlfriend, who will never cure cancer and can't fix a flat. Your ideas? Not better than mine. Are better than his, but he's no Mensa scholar. Will never go to college. Only has a 3.8 the whole pie. He ate the whole pie. It was amazing. It was disgusting. You're disgusting. You're beautiful the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. I'm no model, I'm no beauty queen, I'm not, I'm not bad, I'm not great, I'll never be great, I'll never be John Lennon, Albert Einstein, JFK, I'll never be a sparrow, just a butterfly, we're all butterflies, just some of us are better than others, better to look at, better to be with, some of us were born to be great. See, that's something we grow into, like that. Right, when I was a, a teenager, I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison about a little black girl who wanted to be blonde with blue eyes. When I was about the same age as that little girl, I wrote a story about a caterpillar who wanted to be a sparrow. The world is full of examples of people who love life so much, their most fervent prayer is to be good enough to deserve it. When we are young, we make choices that reverberate throughout our entire life. We teach ourselves that there is something wrong with us and happiness will come from fixing that. Said the caterpillar to the Lord, make of me a sparrow. Let me get pretty, get smart, get rich. Let me be perfect with a great job, house, family. And if I don't have those things, Lord, I'm a failure. Just an average person with an average life, a child who defines greatness as becoming a robot who thinks 30 is old and hopes to one day live in Snoopy's doghouse, has unwittingly set himself on a course. This future Quidditch champion with x-ray vision and sparrow dreams, dreams of one day mastering the force, unaware of the force, now trying hard to master him. We have been taught to believe that our life's value depreciates according to who appreciates its value. So now we want likes to know we are likable, views to know we are watchable, want to play a game of hashtag in the hopes of being it. We fear that when we come to die, it will be the internet that will tell us we have not yet lived. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Make a list of the greatest people you can think of in all of human history, living or dead. Now imagine if there was no TV, no radio, no internet or phone, and you measure greatness in what you can see, what you can feel, in people you've actually known. How different is your list now? I mean, my Nana couldn't dunk a basketball, you know, 
You can open your eyes, by the way. Good defender. You know, she could lock down the paint pretty well, right? But the point is, she ain't knocking Jordan from the top spot. But Jordan never made me cookies. Never lit up at the gate to see me come off of an airplane. My mother, not great on television. Yeah, but I mean, she isn't bad, Lisa. She's not bad with the banter, you know? She knows how to play to the camera, right? 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 She isn't filling Oprah's spot on the couch, is what I'm saying. But Oprah never sang me to sleep at night, never sat me on her lap and made me sound it out. My father is 78 with Parkinson's and a hearing aid he can't work and pills he forgets to take and it is a study in patience to help him now on the computer and more and more when I see him now I marvel at him his greatness is affirmed and will never chart on YouTube won't be taught in history books or remembered in song he has large bouldered himself into the deep lake of existence and will be felt rippling from my brothers to my mother and myself through my friends and their family, he will be felt long after his laughter is no longer heard. You will hear his voice resonate in my words and my father's father in me can be observed. If all of Shakespeare's plays had been destroyed, he would be every bit the writer that he is now and none of us would know his name. So greatness exists regardless of fame. My father is no Gandhi, no Einstein, no Oprah, but I heard a butterfly remark on him to a sparrow once. You will never be him and he will never be you. There is no distinguishing feature between people who do remarkable things and those who don't save the belief that there is. And perhaps that is the most remarkable thing of all. We think there are great people and the rest of us. We're wrong. These stars shine upon us all equally. This rain falls indiscriminately down. This air fills my lungs, oxygenizes her blood, pumps through his body the same as it does yours. This sunset is for each of us to claim. This moment calls to all of us by name, gives us each these opportunities to change the world by changing our world, by changing our thoughts, the way we think we are. The only limitations are the ones we give ourselves. There is no measurement for greatness, but the one that we define, there is no life more precious than the one measured in your moments and your milestones with the word mine across the top, scribbled in your hand, boulder yourself into the universe, butterfly into the land, a caterpillar who had dreamed of being a sparrow emerged from his cocoon the other butterflies, seeing he was not a sparrow, gathered around. His wings shifted. He lifted his head. They didn't make a sound as he said. I never thought I'd fall apart the way I did. I mean, someone should warn you about that. They should tell you that that's how it happens, that there's a moment in the cocoon when the caterpillar you were will be completely dissolved. You'll be entirely liquid and everything will seem lost. So there I was, no longer caterpillar, not yet something else. And in that moment, I started thinking about what I truly wanted, about who I considered truly great. I even made a list. I wondered how success tastes, how beauty stands, what fight was worth my fist, what love deserves my hands. I imagined hope, happiness, cold night, moonlight, soft eyes, the warmest butterfly kiss. I felt myself become solid as I thought this, felt the cocoon, cocoon rip, felt this hotness, felt my body slip as I fell. My heart fell open and I felt my thoughts shift. I realized desire you gave me change, and what change does, it gave me the chance to let go of everything I wasn't and become exactly what I was. And when I did that, I felt bliss, said the butterfly to the Lord, not a sparrow, Lord. Don't make of me a sparrow. Make of me this. Thank you very much. It was an honor.